Last time we talked about the comparator circuit, and today we're going to take this a step further and talk about the voltage follower. We're going to start with our op amp symbol. Output to inputs. There's our standard op amp circuit diagram. And once again, quick review the way the op amp works is the op amp will change its output voltage to whatever it takes to make the two input voltages equal. More specifically, if the voltage at the inverting input is higher than the voltage at the non inverting input, the output will be driven to a lower voltage until either these two voltages become equal or we reach the bottom limit. And if the voltage at the non-inverting input is higher than the voltage at the inverting input, the voltage will go upward or more positive either until the two inputs become equal or we hit the upper limit. The voltage follower, we simply take the output of the op amp and run it back to the inverting input. There is the voltage follower. And let's take a look at what this circuit does. So let's put a voltage at the input. How about plus 2.751 volts? Why so many significant digits? Just because I can. Now, what does the circuit do? It will change its output voltage to whatever it takes to make the two input voltages equal. So we're going to assume that the circuit is doing what it does and has made the output to whatever it takes to make the input voltage equal to plus 2.751 volts. So there we have a properly balanced op amp circuit with the two input voltages equal. Now the question is, what voltage did the op amp have to put here to make those two voltages equal? Well, there's nothing between this input and the output to make any change in the voltage. Even if you argue, well, there's a little bit of current flowing through the feedback loop and there's going to be some voltage drop, it's negligible. There's almost no current flowing into the op amp. So nearest makes no difference. There is no current flowing in this loop. So with no current flowing through it, we can't have a voltage drop. Therefore, the output voltage must be equal to the voltage at the inverting input. So the output voltage is going to be plus 2.751 volts. And whatever happens to this input voltage, the output voltage is going to track it. So if this voltage drops down to minus 3.2 volts, the output voltage is going to change until this voltage equals minus 3.2 volts, which means the output voltage will equal minus 3.2 volts. So whatever voltage we put at the non-inverting input, is the voltage we get at the output. First question you might think is, what good is that? Well, now we're going to look at another property of the operational amplifier that makes it useful, and that is the input and output impedance. The operational amplifier has a very high input impedance, but it has a low output impedance. What does that mean? Well, recall that High impedance means low current. Low impedance means high current. So we want to drive this amplifier. Since it's a high impedance input, it takes very little current to drive it. So that's great for circuits that have high output impedances. So remember that if we have a high output impedance and we try to drive a circuit with a low input impedance, we have a mismatch because the high output impedance cannot supply a lot of current, but the low input impedance demands a high current. So once again, high impedance is associated with low current, low impedance is associated with high current. So a high impedance output cannot drive a circuit with a low impedance input. So what can we do? Well, the op amp has a high impedance input, which means we can drive it with a circuit that has a high impedance output but the output impedance is low. And so 
That means, once again, low impedance means high current, so we can deliver the high current that is needed to drive a low impedance circuit on the other side. So this makes what's called a buffer circuit between a high impedance and a low impedance. And that's what we use a voltage follower for. Voltage follower is also known as a unity gain amplifier because there's no gain between the input and the output, only a impedance match. One place you might use a voltage follower is for a precision voltage reference. Let's start out with a Zener diode. Let's make that a 5 volt Zener diode. And let's say we want a 2.5 volt reference. Easy enough. We'll use a voltage divider. Equal resistors. So with equal resistors, I have 5 volts across both of them, 2.5 volts across each one. Therefore, I end up with 2.5 volts at this point. But let's say the circuit we're driving needs a substantial amount of current. Let's say it needs 20 milliamps. Well, where's that 20 milliamps going to come from? Well, it's going to come through that 10K resistor. So what's going to happen? Well, we know what's going to happen is that when you increase the current through that resistor, the voltage across it will change and so, in this case, that voltage is going to drop, and so it'll be something less than 2.5 volts. So if we need a substantial amount of current coming from this reference, what do we do? Well, very simple. We run that through a unity gain amplifier, or a voltage follower. I'll leave out the power supplies at this point. So we have 2.5 volts here, therefore we'll have 2.5 volts on the output, but this op amp is quite capable of delivering 20 milliamps. But remember, there's virtually no current microamps flowing into the op amp. So the amount of current flowing into the op amp has virtually no effect on the voltage divider that remains at 2.5 volts. We're able to drive our other circuit that requires 20 milliamps, at our 2.5 volts using our voltage follower. In our next video, we'll go to the next step and make a non-inverting amplifier.